under the name, we at uh, Young Dharma believe Buddhism is not just about tantras and mantras, but a lifestyle and a practice. This event is organized to promote the actual values and the true essence of Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy. I and many others present here have been actively following Gishila's uh, talks on the Tibet House Facebook page, uh, YouTube live streamings, or his TED Talks. Uh, we could not think of anyone but a venerable Geshe-la to embark a start to this journey. We are also really grateful to him for accepting our proposal for this talk. There are about uh, 70 um, young people from Kim who are connected with us right now. So without further ado, I would like to request Yeshil Dorjila from South Sikkim to kindly introduce our speaker to everyone. Thank you. Hello, Kuzambo. Namaste. Uh, it's an honor for me to introduce our venerable Yeshil Dorjila Abdullah. He is currently uh, in, as, in the capacity of director in and the term Geshe, for those of you who do not understand, is a degree that is considered to be one of the highest academic degrees that in this degree, well into that of PA. Although I don't have much time because of time constraints, I won't be able to explain very briefly, but I would rather quite shortly. Geshe has done his Zarampa degree in 2006, uh, Lothring Monastic University went on to join Tantric, tantric study, co-authored philosophical books with professors in the UK and USA, as well as with the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama himself. Now, without further ado, I'll... Uh, Hello everyone, and, Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Tenzin Doma, Program Coordinator of Tibet mm -hmm. House, and I would like to take a few moments before we start the actual talk, that uh, since you all are might not be aware of uh, our institution, so I would like to give a brief introduction about Tibet House. Um, Tibet House Culture Center of Dalai Lama was founded in 1965 by His Holiness Dalai Lama to preserve and disseminate the unique cultural heritage of Tibet and provide a center for Tibetans and studies. And we also have a museum of valuable Tibetan arts and artifacts, as well as a library and a conference hall where we weekly philosophy classes mm -hmm. and lectures were held. Mm -hmm. And okay, so we regularly organize this uh, lectures, conferences, like international national conferences, exhibitions, film screenings, and festivals throughout the year. So these programs mainly focused on Indian, Tibetan, and Nalanda Buddhist history, and science, religion, philosophy, art, literature, and culture, where, we, where it witnesses to the vital and evolving heritage of Tibetan people. And we also offer a different courses on Buddhist philosophy at present, uh, five years of master's Nalanda master's course on Nalanda Buddhist philosophy, on which 360 participants are enrolled from 39 countries, and one year diploma course on Nalanda Buddhist philosophy, in which 547 participants and 1200 participants in one Nalanda, Nalanda diploma batch one and two has been enrolled from many different, such as uh, 41 countries, has been complete enrolled and has been completed with two batches and Tibet House also offers Tibetan language course in every four months till now uh, 20th batch has been uh, passed so far so I would like to announce uh, one of the our major programs that we have been very keen to be uh, acknowledged that uh, after the successful launch of five years Nalinda master's course uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama on 9 December so we've felt that there is a genuine need in the modern world to introduce the rich legacy of Nalanda tradition in a systematic and a comprehensive way delivered through a shorter duration courses. So we introduced Nalanda Diploma course in Buddhist philosophy 
in 2018. So the first batch and second batch of Nalanda, batch, Nalanda Diploma course has successfully graduated in 2019 and uh, 2020. So more than 1,200 participants from 44 countries across the globe have benefited from these two batches of Nalanda Diploma course. So this year, so it's a very, it's a golden opportunity. Those of you are interested in learning Nalanda Diploma uh, with this philosophy, um, with this philosophy. So this year we also announced the third batch of Nalanda Diploma course. Uh, the registration is open from 1st May uh, register open and first may until will remain open until 31st August. So those of you who are interested, I'll share the link. I'll share the link uh, to the uh, Miss Yigala to uh, add in the uh, young young Dharma Sikkim group. So you can, if you are interested, you can register. And the teaching will commence from 1st August 2021, and it is a 10 months course, and which. Uh, we also provide 75 person scholarship in course fees in monastic to monastic and students, while participants from NDC 1, Nalanda Diploma Course 2, and Nalanda Master's Course can avail 50 person scholarship on the course fees. And secondly, we, we will also share the link that she will circulate in your group. Uh, WhatsApp group, and we also share our upcoming programs such as uh, Law of Karma teaching on this month of 25th and 26th, and Lamium teaching program uh, from 12 June to 21st August. So, if you, those of you are interested, we will share you the link to register on your WhatsApp group. Thank you, and I will not take much time. I will directly uh, request Keshela to kindly proceed with the talk. Thank you. Okay, um, Tashi Dilek, and thank you, uh, Tenzi Gala, Ishizuchila, and each and every one of you. And I could see uh, Ishi Ponba. Yeah, I met her here in uh, Tibet House. Um, I've been actually to Sikkim so many times. I was just wondering. Do all the Sikkimese youngsters ex exist? Where really do they exist? I never saw young Sikkimese boys and girls. And uh, I've been coming to Sikkim for so many times. Uh, the first time, I think, was when I was in my 30s with His Holiness the Dalai Lama as his translator. And uh, we had the a big uh, program in one day, I don't know what that hall is, in a big hall in Sikkim. Um, I remember this so well. And then the, I was always meeting with the elder Sikkimists. I was just wondering where are these young Sikkimists, boys and girls? They're non-existent. And today, Tinsley brought all of you here. So I'm so happy that I'm all of you. And meanwhile, I'd also like to uh, inform you that here we have Dr. Pooja Dabra, just raise your hand. Okay, Dr. Pooja Dabra, she's here. In fact, uh, why I am asking her to join us here is for the reason that um, she did her PhD from the university in the Buddhist studies, and she studied in Tibet House all these many years. And now she's teaching in Namgyal Institute of Tibetology. She's a professor there. So they, I would highly recommend that uh, the uh, Tizi Yigala and Ishi Dujila uh, with the uh, Yan Dharma Sikkim organization to uh, make the most of her presence there. Her knowledge is so refined. And of course, she's very bright. And uh, so I would say that, in a way, the fact that she's here in Sikkim with you, Namgil Institute of Tibetology, uh, you can really benefit a lot from her. And uh, maybe you are like out age or maybe you older than you, but like the same age as my, me with you. Okay, so with this in mind, um, I'm really very glad to see that 
the uh, Tenzi Igala and your team is able to just attract all your friends and uh, create this Ayan Dharma Sikkim organization, which is so precious. And uh, so what you're going to do is that uh, one and a half hours, maybe a little around one and a half hours, we'll have now we have maybe one hour, 20 minutes. I will have the, the basic introduction of the Buddhist philosophy, psychology, and their relevance to our digital life. And then, the, more importantly, I'd like to invite questions. Uh, Tenzi Igala, she, she is so particular that we keep a little time for question answers. And in fact, for me, this question and answer would be really very helpful for the reason that um, that I'll come to know your the, what is your thinking. So on that basis, and then then my talk, my interactions, and then all of us to know each other. And perhaps who knows that uh, there are a lot of things that I can learn from you from your questions. We never know. So it's going to be like a mutual benefit. And you're thinking, you're very fresh. You're all uh, the, yeah, the, being from a younger generation, that would be amazing. Okay, so for me to learn from you. Okay, with this in mind, the first thing that I like to begin with is that you may be wondering what he's going to speak on. And I may be wondering what kind of audience they I have. So the point is that that um, the it took me back in time in 2008, 2008, when His Holiness Dalai Lama, when he was invited to give a public address in Delhi University um, to like the big audience. And at the end of the talk, um, during this question and answer session, a young girl stood up to ask questions to His Holiness. So this I think would be the, the right juncture the right, the intersection, uh, which can connect us to our talk. The question asked was, what is the purpose of life? And I'm sure each one of you, you're looking for the purpose of life, right? Whether or not going through the Instagram or the Facebook and looking for more likes, whether there's a purpose of life or there's a greater purpose of life. Is a big question. So this girl asked the question to His Holiness, what is the purpose of life? Then His Holiness, without second thought, what is said was that we live on. Okay, meanwhile, I'm just wondering how many of you agree with me that number one, His Holiness said that we live on hope and we hope for happiness. Therefore, the purpose of life is to get a genuine happiness. How many agree with me? Raise your hands. Or well, how many agree with His Holiness? Not me. Okay, raise your hands. Very good. I'm glad to know this. Now, the next question that you might have, you will surely have, is that how can I have the, say, the genuine happiness? Perhaps this is going to be a question. How can I have the genuine happiness? Okay. Um, so with this, first of all, I like I like to take you to let's say that um, the Big Bang. Big Bang happened fifteen billion years ago, and then where is the singular Big Bang, multiple Big Bang? These are all the questions of the physicist. And um, then the for like. 14 billion years, no, for like 11 billion years, the solar system was not, was not existent. And then 4.5 billion years ago, this solar system, say the, the singularity, simply exploded in the form of Big Bang, and then the various galaxies were being split into, thrown into uh, the different directions, and then the Milky Way galaxy, again, it was, it just split within like 14 billion years ago. 
And then finally, 4.5 billion years ago, the solar system again came out from the explosion of the Milky Way galaxy. And then finally, 4.5 billion years ago, uh, the, the, the planet Earth started to cool down. Of course, all the plants started to cool down and then the uh, water came into existence. This is all physics is not the Buddhist philosophy. It's not the Buddhist cosmology. It's the physics. For 4.5 billion years ago, then the water came, water uh, came into existence. It was formed on the planet Earth. Then 4 billion years ago, the first unicellular organism came into being. And this unicellular organism it started to develop over these 4 billion years, just imagine. 4 billion years, and finally, 0.3 million years ago, that the first human being came into existence. Okay, this is the human evolution. And in between, from this unicellular organism to the human being, there is such a gradual process of uh, process of development happening in the organisms, and more and more sophisticated brains start to come out. Now the human beings, the modern human beings, where uh, we have such a brilliant uh, sophistication of the thought process. Although in physics we talk about the entropy, where the tendency of the substance of the world is to go from the orderly state of orderliness to the state of disorderliness. But in terms of the, the organisms, it started from the extremely crude to the extremely organized version, which is very different from how it was taught in physics. Okay. Keeping that aside, keeping that aside, now the purpose of life. So whatever is the case, we already exist on this earth. And uh, perhaps when I was in, uh, when I was in uh, Sikkim the first time with His Holiness, uh, most of you, most of you are uh, maybe toddlers. It must be about like 16 years ago, 16 or 15 years ago. You must be very young, like 10 years old. How many of you were 10 years, younger than 10 years when you were uh, six years ago when I was first there? Just raise hands. Younger than 10 years old? Or younger than, okay. I'm sure most of you. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the purpose of life? So we are already here on this earth. What's the purpose of life? So it's always, as it's always said, that we, we live and hope. And hope for happiness. Therefore, genuine happiness is the purpose of life. Okay, with this in mind, um, the, what I'd like to share with you is that finally, uh, the point is that the, the point is that uh, we seek happiness and we shun miseries. This is reality. We seek happiness and we share misery. Okay, uh, now tell me, tell me, um, how many agree with me that we seek happiness and we share misery? Raise hands. If you agree with me, raise hands. Okay, so I'm sure uh, we all agree with this. Then the next question is, the next question is, what degree of happiness do you seek and what degree of misery do you shun this question and most of you will say that if possible 100 percent and if possible zero suffering i'm sure you all agree with me then and some of you may say that okay uh wait but to achieve 100 percent happiness is it possible? And if I ask this, uh, some of you may say that it's not, it's not at all possible. And how many think that it's not possible to get 100% happiness is not possible? Reasons? 
Be very honest. Let's be very honest. Okay, two, three. Okay, four. Okay. And how many of you think that, yes, of course, it should be possible. How possible? I don't know, but it should be possible. Raise hands. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, good. So which means that we are split into uh, two groups. Some who think that you know, the, well, it's very unlikely that we can have all the hundred percent happiness. And some people say that I don't know how, but for sure there must be a ways and means to get hundred percent happiness. Okay, so this is from where we begin. The point is that that what is Buddhism? What is the teaching of the the, the Buddha? This question. So this. Let us not follow blindly. And as I ask you, hey, you are you are the heretical. You are I mean, say the you are totally the infidel, heretical, and heretic. Not to accept uh, the Buddha's teachings. No, this should not be approached. The Buddha's approach is that you have every freedom to accept or reject. You have every freedom. The point is, the point is that uh, whatever you accept, whatever you reject, it must be for your own benefit, for your happiness, and to get into your suffering. This is the point. So in, in short, don't follow blindly. This is what uh, Tenzi Yigala very clearly indicated, that the Buddhist teaching should not be seen as mere uh, the, the tantra or rituals, mantras, and so forth. But should be seen as an extremely practical, uh, the a practical approach to life, which is so precious, and particularly the youngsters. You must know this. So, uh, the, in other words, you must be ready to ask questions. If you don't agree, if you don't agree, you don't have to say I don't agree. It, it doesn't make sense. Feel free to ask questions. I don't understand it. So please explain. This should be our approach. In other words. Be analytical. Don't be a uh, blind followers. This is a message. With this in mind, um, the 2000, 2003, 2003, um, when I was in England, when I was in Cambridge for my studies, when I was in Cambridge, um, there have been uh, some for you. Uh, some of you may be wondering, okay, he began with the physics. Is because that when I was in school, I was so fond of physics. My, uh, let's say, the, the subject which I liked the most um, was physics. And uh, before physics was introduced as a separate subject, um, the, my, the, say, the favorite subject was mathematics, and eventually mathematics and physics. Okay, so when I was in, in Cambridge, I had the opportunity to meet with many of the physics professors. Uh, particularly, there was one professor who was so, so bright. And uh, believe it or not, uh, the, unless until you have the, say, the inquisitive thought or analytical uh, thinking, it's so difficult for, to, for you to talk to him. Because the moment you talk to him and in two lines, he will say that you have an internal contradiction. It doesn't make any sense. What you are saying is just nonsense. It doesn't. It is, there's an internal condition there. This is how he always interjects other people. So therefore, you must have a very sharp intellectual thinking. Okay. And then the, uh, what happened was that, <clears throat> that the, with a common friend we met, and uh, my friend, the common friend, he introduced me to him, uh, saying that, okay, he's a Buddhist monk, and who is he? He's interested in physics. And uh, then because of being having a common friend, he just just to you know make his make our common friend happy, he said, okay, tell me what question that you have on physics. This was his approach. So we started having discussions. Discussions. And then the discussion really went till like the it was meant as a birthday party of a common friend. And then we ended up like 12 a.m. in the midnight. And two of us, the, all the rest of the guests, they all left. And then finally our host told two of us that, 
okay, now two of you, it's only the 12, but you leave. Okay, so as we have to end, then he said that, okay, Dorji, uh, I'll invite you for a dinner and we'll, we'll continue the discussion. And it was all debates, discussions, debates, not really like a cordial discussion, but really a heated debate between two of us. And then they, during uh, the lunch that he hosted, no, dinner he hosted in his place, they, again, he started with the debate and his wife was preparing the dinner for us. Then he, what he said was that, Dorji, okay, now look, I just see how many of you are from physics. What he said was that in this world, only physics is education. Let me repeat it. He said, in this world, only physics is education. And I said, why? Because only physics allows you to have a critical thinking. All others are imitation of the earlier teachers. Then I said, okay, at least you're given a reason. Hold on what the Buddha has to say. Then I said it, Buddha, where the Buddha said, the wise men and women and the bhikshus, just as the goldsmith tests the purity of the gold by cutting, rubbing, and burning the gold, you should also examine my words and put them into practice, not simply because you respect me. And then he remained silent for a few seconds. Then he said, oh, the Buddha must have been a great physicist. Okay. Uh, so the, what I'm saying is that the approach must be analytical. It should not be blind faith. This is the point. So with this in mind, the next question is whether or not we can have 100% happiness, whether or not we can get rid of all the suffering. The point is that we should be really very realistic and we should follow reasons. We should be rational. With this in mind, um, the, what I like to, first of all, what I like to tell you is that, uh, the, okay, every now and then, uh, I may ask some questions to you. Uh, you it's going to be interactive. And um, the, every now and then, the, I may ask you to, you know, let's say, think of something more experiential yourself. Uh, to relate this with your own life to see if it makes sense. That's very important. With this in mind, um, the one thing, say, your happiness or your suffering. One, uh, this is uh, the, um, some people say, if you go to, if you go to the pubs, if you go to the pubs, pubs means, the alcohol, the, the, the place where you drink, you drink alcohol. If you go to the pubs, people believe in happiness and in the alcohol. Alcohol is happiness. Happiness outside the world, outside you. And if you go to Himalayas, that people think happiness inside. So something, some people think happiness outside. They go to pubs, happiness in the pubs. And some people think that happiness is inside. You go to the mountains, they stay away from this is um, the, the different approach. What's the reality? Who is correct? The people in the pubs, they're correct? Or the people in the humanities, they're correct? Who's correct? Right? Happiness. After all, we are seeking happiness. And this happiness that we are seeking, is it really inside or is it really outside? Okay. For this matter, uh, what I would suggest is, um, okay. Um, finally, let's say that the... Um, Finally, what you want is you want to uh, get rid of all our miseries. This is what we want. By going to Himalaya, if your miseries go up, they disappear, do it. And if you go to pubs and your miseries disappear, do it. That's your dharma. That's your dharma. In fact, I remember when I was uh, when I was in my class eleven, class eleven, and uh, then the uh, the I was being introduced to one great teacher who did not really have modern education and uh, who was his hermit. And uh, then my senior, who introduced me to my senior, who was in class 12, who introduced me to this teacher um, who was a hermit. 
uh, the Muslim introduced to him as, oh, there's a young boy there, what are you doing to me? He's so, you know, he's, he's intelligent and he has lots of questions to you. So when I approached him, um, he was a little reserved. Uh, the, the, the later, the, who became my teacher, he was a little reserved. Okay, he, like, this young boy may be very cynical about Buddhism. And he was a little reserved. Of course, I'm not cynical, right? I saw he has tremendous curiosity with me. And I started to ask questions to him. He could sense that it, it was very genuine. Then instantly he relaxed. He relaxed and he said one thing to me. It's extremely modern thinking. And even today, just I get so fascinated, just fascinated to think about this, what he said. He said that, hey, Doriji, if you don't have suffering, you don't need Buddhism. Don't do Buddhism if you don't have suffering. It's amazing. It's so scientific. It's so uh, the modern thinking. The point is that we don't have to do Buddhism simply because I'm a Buddhist. I'm born in Buddhist family. Why should you have to take medicines if you're okay? If you're physically okay? Why should you have to take medicines? So Buddha, the teachings of Buddha should be seen as a medicines rather than as uh, rather than as you are, you know, uh, uh, like, okay, I had to do it. No, no, it should be relevant to you. If it's not relevant, discard it. That's the point. So with this in mind, uh, given that we are seeking this happiness, you want to get into suffering, just see if the, the teachings given by the Buddha, um, teachings Buddha, Buddha gave, they have any relevance to you getting rid of your suffering and to have the maximum happiness. Just see that. For that matter, okay, uh, what I'd like to do is that all of us, we um, will do a little bit of exercise here. Okay, uh, we'll stretch our hands. Okay, stretch your hands. Um, okay, upside down. Upside down, upside in front, in front, in the front. Very good. Okay. Now what you do is that do as I do. Very good. Okay. Very good. One time is good. So what happened? Sorry, I have what connection. happened was that there was a sound came out. The sound, the sound came out. Okay. The sound came out. This sound came out because of the two hands coming together. This sound came into existence because two hands coming together. Likewise, all our miseries, including the fear of COVID-19, including the fear of COVID-19, is all like the sound of a clap. This sound of, just the sound of a clap should come into existence because of the two hands. All our miseries, our tension, anxiety, and so forth, the fear of, the fear of COVID, and so forth, they should necessarily necessary come into being by the combination of the two hand slide factors, two external, two factors. One hand symbolizing external factors and the other hand symbolizing internal factors. Now, that this is reality. So, many people think that, okay, you have a problem, I'm so mentally sick, I have a problem. No, it's purely mental, it's purely mental. This is wrong. Because your problem is because of two things, external and internal. And some say that, oh, it's purely physical, it's purely physical. This is also wrong. People who believe that the pubs is the ultimate a solution. A pubs, alcohol, alcohol, and all this indulgence. These are these are the real happiness. They're also wrong. They see the happiness totally outside. This is also wrong. And identifying totally inside. Inside, you know, oh, you, you have mental problem. This is all because of your thinking, think properly. This is also wrong. This is wrong. How? I'll give you one the example. Um, the, it must be like, I think, 2000, 2007. 2007, when I was in Spain. Spain. There was a medical, uh, there was a homeopathy medical doctor, a very famous homeopathy doctor. And he happened to have come, he happened to uh, be in connection with the Buddhism, and particularly about the Buddhist practice, compassion practice. 
And in those days, in those days, I was really going through very stressful life, meaning physically, say the mental stress. Because me, I was in the office, me serving in the office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and we say always somehow connected so much work for one person, uh, the translation, literary translation, translation, then the, the interpretation, and then the uh, teaching, all this happened, and then some book editor, all these things happening. And I hardly even believe, I hardly get time to uh, even food, eat food. And I'm an ordinary person. I have to depend on food. And the moment I get the first food, I receive a call from the office saying that, okay, his oldest appointment, the, uh, the uh, appointment already started. Are you expected to be here? I have to leave everything for the end. It happened like this. And there's so much of deadlines, one of the other. And when I was there, then this doctor said that he just uh, they checked my pulse and he said, you have so much of stress. I said, you are right. And he said that he did not know what was creating the stress because the deadlines, he did not know that. He said that, no, don't have stress. <laughs> don't have stress. That I didn't say anything. He said that uh, you have to practice bodhicitta. You have to practice compassion. So do calm down your stress. I didn't say anything. And there was one Rinpoche who, the, uh, who brought me here. And this Rinpoche, and he was very close friend. And the Rinpoche was extremely, very young Rinpoche, young, much younger than me. He was so upset, and he, he said that, how dare that this doctor is trying to teach a Keshe Laramba Buddhism. <laughs> okay, I said, no, 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 no. Calm down. Let him, let him speak. I'm so happy to see that, you know, he's talking about Dharma to me. So the, if this how, how it does to me, this is an indication that this, he's doing the same thing to all his patients. It's so good. He's a Westerner and he's talk, uh, talking about compassion to his patients. It's so, so precious. Please keep calm. And then he was saying, well, again, he was telling me, you must practice compassion. And he told me how to practice compassion. And I was listening to him. And this Rinpoche was even more angry. Even more angry. He's really, literally, he became so angry. And because two of them are very close friends. And he said, how dare that he is, you know, he's so arrogant, teaching Kishid Haramba, Kishid Haramba, and the, how to practice compassion too much. I said, no, no, keep, keep calm. I'm so happy. I'm getting, I'm getting relaxation by being in front of him, to listen to him, seeing that so many people must be benef getting benefit from him. Okay, so what I'm saying is that, say, Internal factors are there, external factors are there. Both are there. Both are there. It's not just only one side. Like the two hands. Okay, right hand. Right hand out. All of us, right hand out. Okay, no sound. No sound. Now left hand. No sound. So for the sound to come, there must be two hands coming together. Likewise, uh, for our miseries, for our miseries, external factors, and internal factors, both must be there. Both must be there. So on the now, some people think that external factors. Some people think that internal factors. In fact, we should consider both. The wise people are the people who are very realistic. External factors are there, internal factors are there. Both contribute to our miseries. So, so if you want to get rid of the miseries, up to you. Either you remove the external factors, only internal factor, no sound. The sound immediately stops. Or remove the internal factor, external factor is there, no sound. Sound immediately stops. What do we need to do? So, how can we distinguish between our ordinary person and the evolved person? How can we distinguish? Ordinary people are so keen to blame outside external factors for my miseries, external factors all the time. These people are ordinary the people. Time. Those who people who look for insight that the internal factors, internal factors for my problem, this must be fixed. These are the noble beings. You may be wondering why? Why? Why those who on the point to outside external factors, they are the ordinary people, and why those people who point to in, in, 
in term factors as noble beings. Why this question? Okay. So for this, before okay. I give the answer, I'll give you some exercise. I'll give and then you some know. exercise. And then you will know. Okay. Um, okay. how many are ready? Um, how many are ready? How many are ready? So what do you okay, do? You are ready. That, so what do you do? Is that, um, the, um, what we do? The, um, is that what we do? Let's say that um, say blaming outside all the time, blaming outside all the time. There's what's the problem? Why these people are known as ordinary? I'll give you one example. Say on the um, Kinsi Yigala says that okay, the all of us, the Young Dharma, Young Dharma Sikkim organization members. We'll all go to Tibet House in Delhi, right? And then Tenzi Yigala takes all of you to Tibet House, Delhi. And then Tenzi Yigala requested Tenzi Dumala, our Tibet House program coordinator, please look for some the, say the, the hotels for them to stay. Yes. Then Tenzi Yigala said that, okay, all of us, all of you will have, we will share, uh, say, uh, two people will share a room. And then what is your complaint? You have a complaint. You said that, Oh, I have no privacy. Then Tinsi goes, okay, I'm sorry. Then I'll give you all, I'll give you the single room to all of you. Oh, I have a day, I'm lonely. You're getting it? So when you're alone, you say, I'm lonely. So which means, okay, you're putting me in a single room, single room is an external factor, I'm lonely. When you put me somebody else, I, you say that, okay, double room, I have no privacy. Okay, so the point is that there is no hard and fast rule to say that you have to do for internal factor, don't do for external factors. There's no hard and fast rule. If you succeed in getting rid of all the external factors, factors, the sound of misery stops. If you succeed in this, that is your spiritual path. Whereas if that doesn't succeed, if you succeed in removing the internal factors, identify the internal factors and remove it, and then your suffering stops, that is your spiritual power. So just do, just do which is, which really stops the sound of the misery, this question. So with this in mind, I will uh, give you exercise for you. Okay. And um, I'm not too sure how many of you are uh, good at mathematics, right? Uh, don't worry, don't worry. I'll give you very simple mathematics. I'll give you very simple mathematics. It has nothing to do with multiplication. It's all about the plus and minus. Plus and minus, and the number also very simple, below six. Can you do that? For sure, that you can do. Okay. Um, um, the, okay, so ready? So your job is uh, to give the answer only after I ask you what is the answer. Then you give an answer. Till that point, do, the, the, do your I say the exercise or the calculation mentally. Ready? Good. Okay. Two plus two plus two plus one plus two plus three minus two plus one. Okay, what is the answer? Just raise hand, somebody very quick, very quick to save time. Okay, uh, Tenzi, you talk last? Uh, 11. Tenzi, you talk last? Okay, yes. Tenzi, you talk last? Yes. Tenzi, you talk last? 11. No, we cannot hear you. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, Sanjay Bedden, good year. Ten. Eleven. Ten. Nine. 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 Okay, show me in fingers. Nine. 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 Okay, how many agree with uh, Sangela? Nine. How many agree with Sanjay? How many agree? Nine. Huh? Oh, no. Okay, Ishi Dorjila, show me fingers. How, what's the answer? 10. 11. Okay, how many agree with Ishi Dorjila? Raise hands. Okay, mostly agree with Ishi Dorjila. 
which means that you're good in mathematics. You're good in mathematics. Okay, now uh, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Do it, do it again. Okay, Sangela, be good, be, be good in mathematics. Okay, let's do it again. Ready? Same. I will not. It's going to be as the same simple mathematics, no complications. Very simple. Ready? Same thing. You give an answer only when I ask you what is the answer. To that point, do it mentally. Ready? Okay. 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 minus 1 plus 2 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 plus 3 plus 3 minus 1 plus 2. Okay, what is the answer? Okay, raise your hand. What's the answer? Ishila, what's the answer? No? Ishila, tell me why not? You succeed so you succeeded so well in the first exercise. Now you did not give the correct answer. Why? Why not? Because I'm not Shakundala <laughs> Devi. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Anybody raise hand? Raise hand. Why, why you huh? Okay, Sanjay, let's take it too fast. Too fast. Okay, how many agree with uh, how many how many agree with things you told about raise hands? That I said it too fast. Raise hands. Okay. Okay, very good. Listen. I said it too fast. This is external factor. Your brain works very slow. This is internal factor. But you blame the external factor. You do not blame your the internal factor. You only blame the external factor. This is the mindset of the ordinary people. You always blame the external factors. You're getting it? You we always blame the external factors. But if you blame the external factors and if it helps you to get rid of your suffering, that is your dharma. But the reality is how many such external factors are there? How many such external factors are there which creates problem to you? Anybody raise hands? Very quick. Anybody? Okay, Ishila. Huh? Infinite, infinite numerable. Infinite external factors are there, right? Infinite external factors are there. If you try to get rid of the external factors, they simply keep multiplying. They will never stop. So therefore, it is unwise to think of remote, the pointing, pointing your finger to external factors and thinking of getting, getting rid of the external factors. This is extremely unwise because your, your aspiration will never be accomplished because external factors is infinite, the way Yishila said. You're getting it? So the wise people, so those people who think which is unrealistic, these are all known as ordinary people. Those people who think realistically, these are known as the evolved no, noble being. Okay. No, noble now, being. Okay. Okay. External factors, external factors, it is just impossible that we can get into all the external factors because it's so innumerable in number. Now, if you want to get rid of all the miseries, to stop the sound of the miseries, what will you do? The wise people will think of the alternate ways. That is to external factor, impossible. Now to see how to remove the internal factor. External factors, however strong, however multiple, no sound. Sound of your misery starts. Okay. So this is what I'm sharing with you. And I'm sure you have questions. What would be your question related to what I said? Thus far, not any questions. What questions come to your mind? I encourage you to be rational. I, I encourage you to be questioning. So what questions come to your mind when I said that? So therefore thinking of getting, of getting rid of all the external factors is totally next to the impossibility. And instead, think of getting rid of the internal factors and however numerous external factors are there, however strong the external factors are there, the sound of the misery starts. So this is what I said. So in this connection, uh, the, I'm sure you have questions. What question uh, came to your mind? Anybody raise hand very quickly to save time. Anyone? 
Okay, then you talk lah. Then uh, yes. how does one control the internal factor? Very good. Okay, I'm sure this same question came to many of you. So the question is, in fact, question can be twofold. One is, what are the internal factors? And the next is, how to get rid of the internal factors? Two questions. You're getting it? Okay, so today we're going to give like a synopsis, synopsis of this. And they say, what are the internal factors? And how to get rid of the internal factors? So this is our journey now. This is the journey of the Young Dharma Sikkim organization. What are the internal factors resp responsible for the miseries? And how to get rid of the internal factors so the miseries stop altogether despite the very ferocious and numerous infinite external factors. Okay, so uh, for that matter, what I will say is that the uh, say the your mind, your mind is the one. The yeah. mind is one. Whether you are experiencing happiness or you are experiencing pain, it is your mind which is experiencing that. How many of you agree with me, Rishans? How many agree with me? Very good. Very good. Fine is your mind. If you don't, if you don't feel it too, if you don't, if you don't feel it too convincing, or if you okay, yes, it should be but then I'm not too convinced. And that this is so important. Whatever we are learning, we must learn whereby we get conviction. If you don't feel convinced, feel free to put that in question mark. You must keep asking questions, which is so important. With this in mind, um, the last year, during the COVID last year, um, the, of course, still the COVID is continuing. And last year, uh, usually um, in the month of May, June, July, for three months, I travel around the world for uh, the conducting uh, programs. Everyone in the different parts of the world at the, at the invitation. And last year, I could not travel. So my friends, and they requested me to give all these teachings online. So one group, were, one group is in Italy. And I was given uh, the, the whole series of talks uh, about like five or six sessions for one group, for one center in Italy. And then at the end of the talk, with the question and session, um, the uh, one person raised her hand and um, they asked a question. The question that she asked was that, oh, you're talking about compassion, you're talking about internal factors and so forth, but the reality is that, okay, look, no, but the reality is that Italy now is severely affected by COVID and that we can't, we now cannot even go out of our house. And it's extremely suffocating and I have to go to the terrace. I go to the terrace. From the terrace, I look down. The whole city, the whole the street, all the, the whole street is empty. It's so gloomy. Usually, the street is so lively, so gloomy. And um, it doesn't help. This is, you know, how it is. So I can, you know, I can really get, get out of my anxiety. So what should we do? Okay, look, so what, what made me uh, share this story with you is for, if you remember, you must be connected to uh, the why, you know, what point, at what point I am sharing these stories. I was telling you that whether you're experiencing happiness or whether you're experiencing pain, it's your mind which experiences that. This is what I, I was telling you. It's not really the object. So there, uh, what happened was that then I said that, are you sure? Are you sure that the street was empty? The person said, yes, the street was empty. It's so gloomy, it's so demoralizing. I said, wow, that's amazing. I said, that's amazing. You should be feeling happy. I said, why? The street, the street used to be so alive, so lively. Now it's so, it's empty, so gloomy. I said, no, all the people who otherwise used to be going around the street, they are telling you that don't worry about the COVID. We will keep you safe. 
We are not on the street. We are not coming in the street. Be happy. Wow. It makes it. This is telling me that I should not worry about the spread of the COVID to me. Because the people, they're following the rules. They're following the rules. And then I have to ask everyone, are you following the rules? No. The fact that they are not coming to the street is telling me that they are following the rules. They're following the rules and the COVID will not spread. Don't, don't, don't fear. Wow. COVID is very dangerous. And this is the way by which I can be saved from the COVID. And they are doing it. These people are doing it. I'm so grateful to all the people who are not coming on the street. And the person said that, wow, that's very different the way of looking at it. Now when I go up this terrace, I look down, the street is empty. I'll, I'm, I'll be really feeling so happy to see that all these people, I feel so grateful to all these people who are not now coming in the street to make sure that, that the, the people around this town, they are safe, that the COVID doesn't spread. So look, the same object where the street is empty, of video thing, you say one way of thinking, it makes you so demoralized and gloomy. And another way of thinking, the same empty street makes you very happy and grateful to the people. Okay, so this is where it's not about the object, it's about your thinking, internal factors. So, what is that internal factor which attracts the miseries? There are two internal factors. There are two internal factors. One is ignorance. And the other one is the selfishness, ignorance and selfishness, self-centered. These are the two factors. These are two factors. Okay. So the, the Buddha said that all our miseries are because of the ignorance. All our miseries are because of the ignorance. In simple terms, what I'd like to tell you is that, that we don't want suffering but we are so rich in suffering. We want happiness, but we are so poor in happiness. We are deprived of happiness. So this suffering, which we don't like, yet we have abundance of suffering, these are all attracted by the ignorance. The happiness that we want, but we are deprived of happiness, is all because of the selfishness, which pushes away the happiness. Let's not forget it. In other words, the two demons inside us, the two demons inside us, which makes us suffer so much, which makes us be deprived of happiness, is the ignorance and the selfishness. These are the two demons. Let's not forget it. The next question is, as Tenji Uthala said, how to get rid of these two internal factors? You get rid of these two internal factors, believe it or not, Believe it or not, that your, your miseries will come to an end, your happiness expands. It's extremely beautiful. Even if you can do it to just 5%, 10%, your happiness expands and your misery simply subsides. This is extremely beautiful practice. So now, say the ignorance, how to get rid of this ignorance and how to get rid of this selfishness. So these now, a system to help us to get rid of these two internal factors, to get rid of all the suffering, and to give you the expansive happiness that becomes your spirituality. You're getting it? It's not that I'm born in a Buddhist family, so therefore what the Buddha taught is my spirituality. No. I'm born in a Muslim family, so what, you know, the, the, the Islamic text taught me, that is my spirituality. So in other words, we all, we all, anybody, anybody who's born on this earth, we cried. Day one we were born, we cried. We cried because of hunger. We cried because of hunger. I don't want the suffering, right? Okay. Oh, I'm a Buddhist. So the, uh, the Buddhist people are suffering there. I'm crying. No, nobody does it. Or I'm in the... I'm a sickness. Okay, the sickness once it was an independent country. Okay, no, we lost. It. No, you are crying not because of that. You simply say, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. That's it. So the point is that we all, whether you're Buddhist or non Buddhist or sickness, non sickness, whatever, we want to end up the suffering and we want to have the happiness. This is who we are. So any system which will help you to get rid of all the miseries, 
and we have to make some happiness. That is your spirituality. So the point is, what is that system which helps me to get into the ignorance? What is that system which helps me to get into my selfishness? And selfishness, let's say that the opposite of selfishness is kind-hearted, very compassionate person. Compassionate person you find in all the tradition in the, amongst the Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Christians, Jews, Baha'is, Parsis, non-believers. There are so many good people, compassionate people that they're everywhere. Okay, so from there we need to learn how to, to get let go of the selfishness. This one part, which requires more extensive teachings. Now the other part is how to get rid of ignorance, this question. Okay, how many agree with me that ignorance is like darkness? Ignorance is like darkness. In dark, you don't see what is around you. With ignorance, you don't know the reality. How many agree with me? Raise hands. Very good. Okay. So ignorance is like darkness. And if you want to uh, say, I mean, we all, including myself, although I'm of the, the older generation, we all went through the same system uh, where we have to sit for exams. And okay, in two days time, there's exam and there's a, such a sense of urgency to study more. Oh, I will, I will burn the, the midnight the lamp, right? And then you stay late, and then there's a power cut. There's a power cut, no light. You cannot read the books. What will you do? Okay, there are two options. One option, oh Buddha, please remove this darkness. This one option, right? Another option is, you look for a candle. Light a candle. You're getting it? And if you say, oh, Buddha, please remove the darkness. If the Buddha is sitting next to you, he'll be very upset. He'll be very, he'll be very upset. Such a stupid follower. Right? Why did you light a candle? Where is you light a candle? The Buddha will be so happy. What a smart girl. What a smart boy. You're getting it? So the point is that we should be very realistic. This is the approach of the Buddha. One point, one point, on the, um, the early morning, I received a call from somebody who knows me so well. Call, and she said, that, Gishela, I'm going to give up Buddhism. I said, okay. And, and, she, and then she said, I'm going to give up Buddhism. I said, okay. And I said, may I know why? She said that the last three years I've been praying to Buddha, I've been praying to Tara, right? And they never answered my prayers. Okay, may I know what's the what's your prayer? And she said that last three years I've been praying to Buddha, I've been praying to Tara that my brother gets a job. I said, okay, okay. If this is the reason why you embrace Buddhism, that your brother to get for your brother to get a job. Don't become Buddhism. Don't follow Buddhism. What you do is tell your brother, instead of you becoming Buddhist, tell your brother, don't go to the pubs. Study well, crack the competitive exams, and you'll get a job. That is a practical way. If you're hungry, don't pray to Buddha, Buddha, I'm becoming Buddhist. Please remove my hunger. No, go to the kitchen. Right? If you're hungry, go to the kitchen. Don't pray to Buddha. Don't say that I become a Buddhist, remove my hunger. No, don't do that. Go to the kitchen, eat something. Right? So the point is that if you if you're in dark, what do you do? The Buddha will be most happy if you light a candle rather than praying to the Buddha, Buddha, please remove the darkness. He'll be very upset. Okay, you have to you have to light a candle. Now, this is a metaphor. This is a metaphor. So to remove the darkness of ignorance, you have to light the, the, the you have to light the candle of the wisdom. The next question is, what is this wisdom? The next question is, what is this wisdom? This is extremely important. What is the wisdom? So wisdom is some discerning mind. Wisdom is a discerning mind whose apprehension of the object tallies with the reality. Let me repeat it. Wisdom 
is the discerning mind whose apprehension of the object tallies with the reality. This wisdom. Now here we see that your question will be, what's the reality? Right? Wisdom is the discerning mind whose apprehension of the object tallies with the reality. Your question, your, your very natural question, the next question would be, what's the reality? So what is the reality? This is you are exploring into what constitutes the ontological reality, the ontology of the phenomena. What's the reality out there? This is the question. So for that matter, we see that the this reality, with the Buddha said that you discovered this and you will see the light. This reality, Buddha did not invent. Let's not forget it. This reality that Buddha did not invent. This reality, the Buddha only discovered. Buddha did not have invent this reality. The reality was discovered by the Buddha. In other words, this reality existed as it is even before the Buddha was born. Let's not forget it. Buddha only discovered it. Okay, what is this reality? This is where Buddhism, Buddhist philosophy, and modern physics comes into intersection. This is a point where the Buddhist philosophy and modern physics or quantum physics, relativity theory, they come into intersection. This is extremely important point, extremely important point. And uh, perhaps in the future, we can, the, the, I can give a talk on what, is, what are the intersections, what are the intersecting points between the Buddhist philosophy and the modern physics, quantum physics, and relativity, what are the intersections? So this is what we can just discuss later. And now to give you a very quick overview of what is this reality? What is the reality? Okay. Um, how many you have, how many of you in your life, how many of you had a very scary dream, nightmares in your life? Raise hands. Once, at least minimum once, twice. Raise hands. Very good. All of us had this dream. It was a very uh, this scary nightmares. Okay. Now I will. If you have this experience, now I'm, what I'm going to share with you will make sense to you. You you can relate. Okay. To what I'm sharing with you, just imagine. Just imagine that. Um, just imagine. Just imagine that at the. Uh, you go to bed, you fall asleep in second, in Gangdog, or wherever you are, in second, in a bed you fall asleep. And then you dream, you dream of Young Dharma Sikkim organization, Tinzi Yigala and Ishidojila, two of them, taking all of you to Delhi, right? Delhi, and enjoying Delhi. Coming to Tibet House. Okay. So, then going back from Delhi, going back. Uh, oh, wow, what a memorable uh, time. Atenzi Gala, thank you. Ishidajila, thank you. You're so happy. And then the, uh, suddenly, uh, say you're all in the, I uh, say, you're all the first going to the airport. Uh, they from Tibet House going to the airport. There was some. Um, Huge, huge earthquake. Huge earthquake. Yeah. Your, the, the, the car, the car was just sucked into the, the crack of the earth, right? And that there's so much of fear in you, so much of fear, so much of fear. And then um, a sudden, and sudden, and sudden, suddenly, on the, uh, let's say, Tashin Amgyala, Tashin Amgyala came flying and picked you up, <laughs> picked you up and you're safe. You are extremely happy. You're extremely happy. And Tashin Amgyala then left you on the, on the road. And again, earthquake, <laughs> right? Earthquake. And then, you, okay, now no Tashin Amgyala. Now I'm being sucked up in the, the crack. In the cracks of the earth, I'm I'm dead now. When you say I'm dead, your mother wakes you up in second. Your mother wakes you up. You wake up. Wow, 
I'm so lucky that nothing happened. It was just my dream. Okay. So in this anecdote, there are several, there are several pieces. The first one is you came to uh, the Yigala, um, each of the two of you to Tibet House and uh, to Delhi. You had a nice time, enjoy, but what a memorable you know, time. And next, going back, earthquake, so much of fear. The next, Rashid Nandiyala picked you up from the sky and you're safe. Next, you, you're put on the road. Again, the next earthquake happened. I'm dead now. Then next, your mother wakes you up in Sikkim. She wakes you up. Wow, I'm so lucky. Okay, there are four anecdotes. Of these four anecdotes, tell me which you like the most. Number one, coming to the Tibet house. Number two, number one, you are happy. Number two, going back, earthquake. Number three, Tashinam Jala saves you, happy. Number four, a second earthquake, you're almost dying. Number five, your mother wakes you up and you realize that it's just my dream. Okay, tell me, which of the five anecdotes do you like the most? Raise your hand. Okay, Tashinam Jala, you have saved everybody. Okay, let's say, uh, Kangri Nyamala. Kangri Nyamala. Number five. Okay, Kari Yimala number five. Okay, uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Raise hands. Raise hands. Raise hands. No one. Okay, Tristan Gila. Number five. Okay, uh, then the Kashmira. The last one, number five. Number five. Okay. My question to you, why number five? Number one is very beautiful. Number one, coming to Tibet house, enjoying Tibet house. What an adventure. So beautiful. Why not number one? Why not number three? Tashin Namjela picking you up from the sky and saving you. Why number five? Anyone? Very quick. Anyone? Very quick. Why number five? Okay. So number 10, Budiala. Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir, because uh, number five is uh, reality. Okay. Number five. Is... Okay. It's reality. Number five is okay. Number five is reality. I agree with Sonam Topdele, Sonam Anybody else? Why number five? Very quick, very quick to save time. I have another the seventeen minutes. Okay, uh, Yigala. <laughs> Uh, they have the secret, they're safe, and uh, there's no danger at them. So that's why they're choosing number five instead of one, three. Okay, um, instead of number five, uh, number, number five, there's no danger. Mm. So number one, what's the problem? Yeah, the very fact that they went to Tibet house is dangerous for them. <laughs> no, Tibet is a pleasant place. <laughs> okay, this is the Yigala. Don't stop others coming to Tibet house. It's not dangerous. Tibet is very safe place. Don't worry. Yeah. Earthquake can happen anywhere in Sikkim, Delhi, wherever. It's not only in Delhi. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now my question to you. Is that uh, the what Sonam Tokdenla said? Is that third one is a reality, right? Reality. I like to make it clearer. Uh, the point is that okay, uh, the uh, okay. Well, I'll give you one example so this will make things clearer. Okay. Um, Pinzi Yigala says that okay. So the first experience was with Tibet, Tibet house. Next time you'll go to uh, Dharamsala to have an audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Who, who likes to have it? Raise hands. Who likes to have it? Raise hands. Very good. Okay. Now, um, the, um, the, that is in the dream. That's in the dream, in your dream. Then Tenzi Yigala takes you to, to Dharamsala. And then you Yigala introduce all, all the, the members of the Young Dharma Sigma organization. That okay, these are members of Young Dharma Sigma organization, your holiness, right? And then he sort of says, Okay, this is Yigala. Uh, but why why not all your members have a cup of tea with me? 
How many like that idea? How many, how many of you like that invitation? Very good. Okay. My two questions. My two questions. First question. First question is how many of you like how many of you like to have this dream tonight? How many of you like to have this dream tonight where his holiness is inviting you for a cup of tea? Raise your hands. Very good. Okay, very good. My next question, don't forget it. My next question. My next question is. My next question is. How many of you will have this dream tonight? How many of you will have this dream tonight? Raise your hands. No, I'm not, I'm not asking how many of you like to have this dream. Everybody likes to have the dream, but how many of you will have this dream tonight? Raise your hands. Okay, Sangela, why not? Sangela, why not? This dream is very nice. Why do you, why you are not going to have this dream tonight? Why not? Everybody listen to Sangela. Because there's a different to have and will have. So why why will you not have it? Okay, anybody? Anybody raise hands? Huh? Okay, no the uh, Good afternoon, uh, everyone. So I might, uh, I might have it. I will picturize no, no, it. I'm that not, I am. Uh, uh, I'm not asking whether you might have it. My question to you is, how many of you will have it? I might and, have. No, you, I'm not asking might. I'm asking how many of you will have it. Okay. Um. The um. Uh, the Kenzi Angela. Why? Why you are not? Why will you will you will not have it? Why? Why you cannot say yes to the second question? Because Gishina, we can't um, control our dreams, or we can't control. Very our good. Dreams. How many agree with Tinsi Angela? This is the, the answer. Very good. Because we don't have the control of our dreams. You're getting it. Dreams, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, we cannot control it. Whereas what Topdenla said, Sonam Topdenla said that. When you wake up, you are not dependent on the dream. You're getting it? So you're free. Say in the dream, although the dream is very pleasant, but you don't have the control of the dream. So lack of control is, if you don't have control, it's a loss of freedom. Loss of freedom is misery. Even the unpleasant, even the pleasant dream is also a form of misery because you don't have the control of this. It's a lack of freedom. Lack of freedom is misery. Whereas the fifth one, fifth, fifth anecdote, when you wake up, you have gained your freedom. You're getting it? That the dream cannot dictate on you anymore because you have seen the reality. You have seen the reality. As the Sonam Tottenha said, you have seen the reality or the dream, they are not real and uh, you don't have the control of that. So, if you want to gain the freedom, what should you do? In these five anecdotes, in these five anecdotes, if you want to gain the freedom, what should you do? Anybody? Anybody? What should you do? Okay. Min Sang La? Min Sang Dama? I think, uh, sir, uh, sir, should be happy in living the present moment, sir. No, no, what I'm saying, of the five moments, of the five moments, um, we all said that we like to have the number five. Why number five? Sonam Tottenla very clearly said that number then one number one through to four, they are all in the dream. And that dream, we don't have the freedom to choose the dream. So if you don't have freedom to choose the dream, uh, you lack the freedom. Loss of freedom is misery. And we are talking about how to get into the miseries. So the first four, they're the examples of miseries. Whereas the fifth one is freedom from the miseries. So the fifth one is what? What is unique about the fifth one? Fifth one from the first four. Anybody? Anybody? In what way the fifth one is unique from the first four? Fifth one is a waking state. First four is a sleep state. You're getting it? First four are the sleep states. And the fifth one is the waking state. Okay. So the point is that seeing the dream as real, 
seeing the dream as real is ignorance or is wisdom? Okay, is ignorance, raise your hand. Seeing, seeing the dream as real is ignorance, raise your hand. Very good. Seeing the dream as real is ignorance. Because of this ignorance, what is the outcome? The fear in the dream. If you don't want to have the fear in dream, what should you do? Wake up. Wake up. By waking up, how, how does it help you? It helps you by seeing the dream as not real. So Top Denla said, so Top Denla said, the reality, that dream is not real. That is the reality. Seeing the dream is not real, that is the wisdom or the ignorance. It's the wisdom, raise hands. Seeing the dream is not real, it's the wisdom, raise hands. Very good. This is wisdom. And this wisdom comes in the dream or in the waking state. In the waking state, raise hands. Very good. So this wisdom comes in the waking state. When you wake up, the wisdom is born in you. This wisdom frees you from the fears. And in the dream, you see the dream is real, this is ignorance. And out of the, the outcome of the ignorance is the fear in the dream. So what do you want? You want the fear or you want the freedom from fear? You want the freedom from fear. If you want the freedom, freedom from fear, what should you do? Wake up from the sleep of ignorance. Right? Okay. So this is how to wake up. This next question. How to wake up from the sleep of ignorance? For this, um, the um, Young Dharma Sikh organization, uh, we have to do more classes in the future. You're getting it? Okay. So I'm very glad that the uh, that you are very seriously involved. And um, I'm so happy. So in fact, earlier I met Michela here. And uh, besides this, I, the, the, all the faces seem to be new. And Kangri Nimala, thank you so much for uh, say, helping Kenzi Igala to make this program happen. In other words, for me, to meet with all of you. Okay, now I like to I think, invite some questions. Any question that you might have, not necessarily from this talk, any question related to Buddhism, science, whatever, as some religion you write and so forth, I'll be most happy. Anybody? Just raise your hands. This is Igala. How do you organize it? Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Um, um, there are a few questions that have uh, already been sent to us by some of the participants. Good. Yes. So the first question uh, would be by Mitsang Tama from Gantok Sikkim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I have a few questions, actually. Like uh, there, are, there, are, there are a set of three questions, but uh, I think uh, two questions should be the first origin one. Uh, I just wanted to know, sir, that um, we have a belief, right? That, um, the existence of karma, right? So, like, how did it start, sir? And, like, how did it come? And we have a self belief or a belief, right? That we should preach. Like, uh, sir, can you, like, based on this statement, can you justify this statement, sir? Uh, which statement? Uh, sir, there is a statement that we often perceive, okay, sir, that uh, the law of karma, as uh, we know, right, uh, that. There is a belief based on this that it's a uh, we uh, some of us think it's a thing, okay? Faith and faith, uh, FAT and FAIG. So, like, how is it relevant? The question is that the law of karma, uh, like, how did it start and how did it come? And we have a perception as well as we, we preach, right? Sir? So, like, uh, can you tell me more about this? Okay. The law of karma. In fact, if yes. you're interested, if you're interested, all of you, all of you, if you're interested, um, in fact, we have a we have a, a separate session on law of karma, organized by house, organized by Tibetan Delhi, and it's going to be advertised to you. This law of karma teaching. Okay, Chinagabe. Okay, it says that uh, 20, uh, 25th and 26th of this month, 
there's going to be a whole teaching on the law of karma. And um, be, be courageous, be courageous to come up with questions on the law of karma, because law of karma is one issue which is a big issue. And oftentimes, what uh, some of the youngsters, what they do is that they don't study at all. And the, the, the parents say that my daughter will study, my daughter will study, my son will study, my son will study, don't go after the Instagram all the time. Don't look for the likes, likes, likes all the time. Study well, and you don't study. And then finally, you fail in the exam. You fail in the exam, and your mother says, now I told you, you fail now. I told you to study, and you do not study. Mom, it is my karma, what do you do? It is my karma to fail, what do you do? Right, mom, you also believe in karma? Yes. <laughs> okay. So this is the abuse of the, karma, the law of karma. This abuse of law of karma, the fact you're, that your mother also does not know the law of karma concept so well, and then you also do not know it, and you abuse the law of karma concept. What is law of karma? In simple terms, it, karma doesn't mean that there's some agent outside there which dictates what you are doing. It's nothing there. It is your own, karma means action. Your own action. Your own action. For example, let's say, your, say, you are, say you are doing, you are in the university. Because you study well in school, you study well in school, then now you are in a good university. Your action of studying well, it has given you a good result being in a good university. And that you get a good, this a job. It's because of your, uh, the previous karma of your st having studied well. If you do not study well, then the, that is a karma which gives a result to you not getting a good job, you not getting a good university, and so forth. So karma in simple terms is your own action. This is number one. Number two is that, yes, what I'm today is driven by the past, but what I'm tomorrow is going to be determined by today. So we, there's no basis for us to blame the past. Because tomorrow is your, in your hand, your karma. What karma are you going to do today? That will decide what you will be tomorrow. Believe it or not, if you remove your ignorance, if you remove your self, if you remove your self-centered attitude, selfishness, these two, if you remove the two internal factors, then that is a karma. And the result is that the sound of the misery starts. That is your effect, karmic effect. So law of karma, if you understand it so well, then the, all these people who abuse the concept of law of karma, you can easily um, stop them. You can easily rectify them, fix their wrong views. So in other words, the, the, what is today is determined by the past karma. What is tomorrow is going to be determined by today's karma. So we have all our responsibility to make sure that the karma that you are accumulating today must be done very precisely very with the con with the conscience you do the, the karma well to make sure that your tomorrow is going to be successful happy and meaningful um, the effect the meaningful the future are you good uh, sir i have one more second yes so may i ask my second yeah. question please Uh, sir, my question is like, we have a belief, right, that life is all about faith and faith. Like faith as in like, we meet a person and we say, oh, it's because of our faith. We met this person, it was our faith. Okay. Then we follow a particular religion. Okay. Then uh, we, as in, we uh, perceive that this is my faith. So, sir, uh, how shall we balance uh, pre okay. how What shall be done here, sir? Okay. I'm not too clear with your question, is you are talking about the faith and the faith. You're born with the religion, and then we, you, we, you know, we believe in it, right? So the, what is your question? What is your exact question? Um, so my question is like, yeah. uh, like, for an instance, okay, sir, like, we meet certain people in our life, okay, then we say that, oh, it was our faith, it was our faith, right, to meet certain kind of people in our life and they give us bad, bad experience, oh, that was our faith, okay, we, okay, okay sir. Oh, okay, and another okay, is, okay. 
So my query okay, first was, one is, let's say you meet with somebody or you are in such a situation and then somebody says, why is this happening to you? Oh, it's my fate. It's my fate. Versus what? Versus? Uh, Anand says faith, sir, like uh, Hindu, Hinduism faith, Buddhism faith, that faith, sir. We often like... Okay, uh, okay. Uh, okay. So basically the point is that, if, okay, what is happening today? Okay, what should I do? That is my faith. Right, that's my faith. It's more like the effect of the karma, faith. Uh, then what's going to be tomorrow? Again, it's going to be my, then my faith. So the basically... Uh, the first of all, what I would suggest, what I would suggest is I gradually try to to go away from um, the following, uh, say, uh, try to go towards following rationality. This is so important. It's so important. And what you've been hearing since your childhood from your family members, from other people, don't reject them. Just see how what they are saying tally with the reality, tally with the rationality. Just see that. So the point is that the faith that we are talking about, F-A-T-E, the faith that we are talking about, it's, it is about, uh, say, it is about, for example, let's say that, uh, that the, okay, I, I live in Delhi. In the wake of the COVID, there are about like 20 million people in Delhi, and some people are affected by COVID, some people not affected by COVID. So what are the reasons? Number one is that those people who take care of themselves, they tend to be safe. Those who are not there totally, totally reckless, uh, they tend to be affected. But is it always the case? No, no. Even those people who took the utmost care, they can, co uh, they can contact uh, COVID. And uh, others who are, you know, just being exposed to the COVID, still they are free from COVID. So how to explain that? That is what is known as the, the today's reality created by the past fate or the past karma. But what about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? That is in your hand today. That is one. Number two is the faith, F-A-I-T-H, Buddhist faith, Hindu faith, Muslim faith, and so forth. What is this? This faith is a system, it's a system to help you. It's a system meant to help you to remove your miseries and to get your happiness. It's a system to assist you. Funny, the goal is to do for your happiness and to get into the miseries. And the faith, F-A-I-T-H, that is a system meant to help you to reach that goal. Whether it helps or not, it depends on many factors. Your own competencies, your own, let's say, the qualities and the fact, other factors and so forth. But that faith, F-A-I-T-H, faith, that is a system meant to give rise to your happiness and to get rid of miseries. Good. Okay. Uh, Kenzi, you told me you have a question? Uh, yes, yes, Geshila, can you hear can you hear yes. me now? Yes, yes. Uh, I am a student. I am one of the students of uh, Dr. Peter Dabral, and I'm studying in the Nagamgal Institute of uh, Tibetology. Uh, mm. we, we have a situation in a sense that we have been given a scenario where if there is a glass of water in the room and there are three people observing a glass of water, say one physicist, one chemist and one lay person like myself. Uh, I will say it is water. The physicist will say is H2O, and the chemist will say it's uh, protons and neutrons and an aggregate of proton, proton and neutron. So conventionally, I think all three of us are correct. But uh, when we leave the room, after we leave the room, what does the water become? When there is no subject to observe the object, the what, what does the water become? Now? So you can't say it's nothing, because if you say it's nothing, then it becomes nihilism. Right? Yes. So yes. how do you describe that scenario? Okay. Um, in a way, like, uh, in a way, 
I think you Yudola is encouraging us to study this concept. How to see, how to see, how to wake up from the sleep of ignorance. How to cultivate this wisdom. So what he's talking about is about the wisdom. The wisdom to see that everything is like a dream. In the dream, you don't see the dream as a dream. You see the dream as real. That is ignorance. The moment you see the dream as re moment you see the dream as dream, then you wake up. When you wake up, you're freed from the nightmare. So, what is unique about the dream? The dream is purely coming from your mind. Likewise, all phenomena that is around you, like the water, electrons, protons, neutrons, H2O, all these are nothing but coming from your mind. Coming from your mind. And what is really there from the object? From the object, there's nothing there. What's all coming is like a dream coming from your mind. So what comes from your mind in there, then the play of conventionality, play of the conventional world is happening. So when we leave this house, I say we're in the hall, all of us, we're in this hall for a program, and then the, we have this glass of water. We keep it there. And then I ask all of us, okay, Tinsi, you told, you, you told us, we ask all of us, what is this? We'll say, this is a glass of water. And if we ask this to a chemist, uh, she will say, this is, say, Madame Curie, right? Madame Curie, who is Nobel, Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, she will say, this is H2O. And if you ask Albert Einstein, he will say, this is electrons, protons, neutrons. Who's correct? All are correct. So if all three of us believe, and what is there in there? Is water? or water, or this is the H2O, or this is, what is this? When you say water, is coming from my mind, we left. When you say this is H2O, this is Madame Curie's. Madame Curie, she said this is H2O, she lives. This electrons, protons, neutrons, is Albert Einstein, he lives. So what is that? The answer is, to give it a technically correct answer, the answer is that it is all. Because when we leave, then Yutola will ask me, okay, you Geshila, I'm from uh, the Namgi Institute of Petrology, studying under uh, Dr. Uh, Bujaji. So tell me what is there? I would say there's water there. If you believe, if you don't believe, go there and you will see water there. You go there, you will see water. And um, I will send to Madam Kuri back to say that this H2O, she goes back, she'll find H2O. And I'll say, Albert and Sam go back. You will see this is electron protons neutrons. So all are there as it is. Very good. This is among the deeper philosophy, um, which will which be will, which be, will be a very heated discussion once we introduce this concept, how everything is like a dream coming from our mind. Good, you thank you. Okay, more questions? Um Yigala. Okay, uh, young Zumla, you have a question? So my question is, uh, how to connect to our self through meditation? Like I practice meditation, it's like guided meditation most of the time. So I feel like I know myself most of the time, but then sometimes I also feel that I don't know myself. At all. So I want to be in a state of being all the time. So how do I do that? How do I practice meditation according to that? Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Yang Zumla. Um, it's very important that uh, that is what is known as the study, reflection, and a meditation. Three things are there. It is very important that we embrace all three together. Study, reflection, and meditation. For example, what Tenzi Yutola is doing, he is spending so much of time on the studies, a reflection, and uh, which is so obvious that he goes to the Namgyal Institute of Tibetology and do masters in the Buddhist philosophy from Dr. Puja Dabra. And uh, meanwhile, the number three, meditation, that is his personal the endeavor in his own uh, room, in his own house, he can be doing uh, the personal meditation. So the point is that 
we need all these three things together. All these three things together, which is so important. Uh, the, let, us not, um, let us not neglect the first two. And those of us who are into the first two, study and reflection, let us not neglect the meditation. All these three things must be done together. So I would greatly encourage Yang Zumla to study the Buddhist philosophy more, to identify what is the self. So what is the self? This is being greatly discussed in um, the Buddhist text. One is known as the entry into the middle way. Entry into the middle way by Acharya Chandragati, a seventh century great Indian master. Entry in the middle way. So in there, there's a whole lot of materials um, on discussing what is the self? How to identify the self? One. Then number two is there's going to be there is an extensive study on what constitutes the self you find in chapter nine of Bodhisattva Shanti Deva's text, text, the title of which is known as a guide to the Bodhisattva's way of life. Chapter nine. And this is going to be our uh, we Tibet House we're going to uh, it's actually uh, organized by uh, the uh, Dharma Israeli, no, Dharma Friends of Israel. Dharma Friends of Israel, from Israel, um, they, they are organizing this program about like, uh, about like a uh, 10 session program on this chapter, chapter nine, the wisdom chapter, chapter uh, to teach us how to wake up from the slip of, slip of ignorance. And anybody's welcome to join this program. And this will be advertised. Okay, this will be advertised later. You can contact at the Yigala. And in fact, you can, all of you can enroll yourself to subscribe yourself to Tibet House, uh, the journal. Uh, Tibet House, the, let's say the email. And uh, you can get all this information, all the teachings happening in Tibet House. And it's so good that now, for example, what Tenzin Mother said, Nalanda Diploma Course, which is just one year program. Uh, this is something happening, uh, being taken part of from all over the world. From India, there's so many people in, in, from India, from America, I don't know from Japan, I don't know. But from America, from England, from Australia, from, the, from wherever. There are some, uh, the, I think that the, the first batch, we had about like 700 over uh, students. And in second batch, over like 800 number of the students. So it's just an ideal thing. You will really enjoy it because it's not like a very technical studies, yet you can study the Dharma very systematically about exploring what this self is like. It's a great, great experience. I would highly encourage Yang um, if you have time to join that, uh, because the study is so important. What is this self? Your question is a big question. It's not a small question. Is a big question. It must require, you know, study. So I will highly encourage you, to one, to take part in this program, uh, which will be advertised very soon about the chapter nine, how to wake up from the sleep of ignorance, cultivating the wisdom, and then later on, if possible, you can join the not in the master, not in the diploma course, which is for one year. So to ask, to inquire, what is the self? It's a huge question. Yeah. Okay. There is a more question. Kishila, can we do a few more questions? Yes, yes, of course, of course. I'll be very happy. Good. Here you go. My question is Does women need a cause of suffering? If yes, Seeking happiness is suffering. Okay, uh, who is the questioner? Uh, Tulitin Sambala. Tulitin Sambala, yeah, uh, please repeat the question. Does human needs are cause of suffering? If yes, seeking happiness is suffering. Okay, this is a very interesting philosophical question. Seeking happiness is it a suffering, another form of suffering. 
Is your question where to go? Okay, let's say, let's say, uh, uh, say um, the, you are in place A and you're going to place B. Place B is happiness and place A is suffering, let's say. And you are seeking, you are in place A. From place A, you want to go to place B of happiness, place A suffering. So you, you are seeking happiness. You are seeking to go to place B. That seeking to go to place B happens in A or B? Seeking to go to B? If you're already in B, you should not seek. You're already there. So seeking, seeking itself is suffering. Yes, you're right. Because seeking suffering, seeking happiness, it happens in A, not in B. In B, if you're already in Sikkim, you will not, oh, I want to be in Sikkim, I want to go to Sikkim. You will not seek, because you're already in Sikkim. I can say, I want to go to Sikkim, right? When you're already in Sikkim, you will say, I, will, I, want to, I, I want to seek to go to Sikkim. You will not say this. So seeking happiness is also a suffering, but acquiring happiness is not suffering. Having soft happiness is not suffering. But keep in mind, happiness, there are two. Mundane happiness and the super mundane happiness, there are two. Mundane happiness is a happiness in the eyes of the ordinary people. In actuality, it's a suffering. Mundane happiness. Okay. Whereas, I say the, whereas the super mundane happiness is a genuine happiness. So, in the dream that um, the that you are picked up by Tashinamjala from the sky, picked up from the earthquake, you are saved. There is a happiness, but that's still a dream. That's still a dream. You don't have the control. So this happiness is mixed with loss of control. But you wake up. That is a total freedom. That is a total happiness. That is a super mundane happiness. So happiness there too. And we can discuss more on this. And the let's say later on, whenever you like to have uh, more classes, uh, I'll be very happy to do that. You know, because these are the areas we re really need to explore more. But it will be uh, the you. I can see that most of you are in your twenties. So this is the right age when you really study more of these, and then when you reach age 30, 40, uh, you feel that, okay, now I can see the meaning of my life. I know how to go from here to the happiness. Very good. Thank you. More questions? No. Uh, we, have a, we have a question from uh, other Shitri from Gangtok, Sikkim. But I guess yes. he's not. Uh, I guess he's not available because uh, due to connectivity issues. I would like to read out his question uh, because sure, he sure. is streaming live on YouTube, as he informed me. So his question is: uh, the information age has allowed bits and pieces of religious knowledge and philosophy to be shared worldwide. While this gives people some context on a religion, it often deprives them of in-depth learning of the particular religion and the underlying philosophy. Since most people don't go beyond scratching the surface, oftentimes the preparators of knowledge themselves do not have a full understanding of it. What is your opinion on this? Thank you. In fact, I fully agree with uh, the person who asked this question. I fully agree with this. In fact, it's so good. For example, say the Namgyal Institute of Tibetology. This is where I'm connected with for the last many years. The last many years. And in fact, I've been coming to Namgyal NIT for a number of years. And uh, so the, it is only like two, uh, two years that two or three years that I'm getting shoot of technology started the master's course in Buddhist thought. This is so good. And particularly uh, the teacher like uh, the Dr. Pujala, you are very fortunate that there is somebody who really learns 
the Buddhist philosophy in depth. It's not just a surface. It can be very dangerous that somebody simply learns something fast, but on the surface, no depth. Just scratch the surface, that's it. And then go out and teach, and it can be very dangerous. It can create more problem than the benefit. So I fully agree. So therefore, I would say that a second, particularly Gangtok, NIT, um, the, the people around the NIT, you are very fortunate that in the first place, and I started this program, and then we have Dr. Pujala, who is a teacher, whose knowledge is really, really very good. I really appreciate that there is somebody there. In fact, the whole purpose of Tibet House, Tibet House conducting these programs is ex expecting that from amongst the participants of these programs, they are really dedicated, intelligent, and uh, the, uh, the, the students who learn the Buddhist philosophy in depth and then go out to the various universities within India and outside India to really uh, teach the authentic Buddhist philosophy. So um, from that point of view, I would say that uh, Namjian Institute of Technology, NIT, is so the one, but uh, they have been so far-sighted, Rinpoche, especially the Sabah Rinpoche, is so far-sighted and so courageously started this program and then so lucky that uh, they got a uh, professor uh, Pujala. So good. So therefore, I will say that uh, Tenzi Igala, uh, the Young Dharma Sigma organization, if you can make the most of uh, Dr. Pujala's presence there, and say, we never know how long she will be there, right? Let's make sure that that all composite things are impermanent, is what the Buddha said. You can't expect that somebody's there, the person will be always there with us. Don't expect that. Make the most out of the presence of uh, Dr. Pujala there while She's there. So this is so important. Yep. Okay. Uh, more questions? There are some so hands coming up. As we are tight and a schedule because uh, Gishala has another schedule as well. So we'll do okay, one we last have question. Okay, we have There's Sonam Tobdena there who likes to ask questions. Yes. Well, uh, it's uh, my... The question is a bit controversial. Uh, it's like uh, <laughs> you said ignorance uh, is uh, a bad thing. But when I was uh, small, uh, I uh, like I did not know much about the world, and at that point of time, I did not have a lot of problem with me, and I uh, did not uh, uh, like uh, feel depressed thinking about the world. But now, as I grow big, I learn about politics, I learn about corruption, I learn about various things in the world and uh, I feel very sad and uh, like I feel very sad sometimes when I hear all these things. So uh, so uh, my question would be uh, like uh, is ignorance uh, really bad at all times uh, because uh, like at some times it is a bliss as well. Okay, uh, Sonam Tartana in a way is asking whether ignorance is bad or ignorance is bliss. This is what Sonam Tartana is asking. Ignorance is bliss. Okay, um, so it is like uh, we, there's an expression which, know, uh, which says that the half vessel makes the loudest noise. If it's empty, no noise. If it's full, there's no noise. Half vessel <laughs> that makes a noise. So uh, the point is that I say the when we get the knowledge, when you get the knowledge, try your best. Don't be scared of acquiring knowledge. But when you are half full, the half full, then there's a tendency that there's quite disturbance coming to your mind more. In which case, what you do is that you try to get the complete knowledge. That's so important. Which means that which is better for the complete knowledge? To reach to complete knowledge, half knowledge is better or no knowledge is better? Half knowledge is much more, much better. Because with half knowledge, you only need another half to get the complete. Whereas if you know knowledge at all, there's no sound, but you have to go all the way, half plus half twice. So therefore, the point is that 
don't be scared of acquiring knowledge. Sometimes the knowledge that we get, sometimes uh, this knowledge can have adverse effect. It's not a problem of the knowledge. It's a problem of it's a problem of how we look at it. How we look at it. Say when you look at these the corrupted officials, corrupt offici officials. You, when you are young, or officials. Oh, I want to become officials. I want to become IS officer, right? And then as you grow older, as you grow older, you hear about this corruption, that corruption, this corrupt. Then you really become so sad, right? Because of this knowledge, you did not have this knowledge when you were young. Now, your college, finish your college, university, and you feel that you know the world better. Okay. Now, what is important is that with this knowledge, with this knowledge, you feel sad. When you feel sad, when you feel sad, which means that you have a tendency, you have an incredibly precious seat of compassion and the seat of truthfulness, seat of honesty. This is so precious. If you do not have this seat of honesty inside, seat of truthfulness inside, instead the seat of corruption, you will be so excited. Wow, this is corrupt. I can also become I can also you know, become rich like, you know, by becoming an officer. Whereas if you feel sad, which means that there's a seat of purity inside you. They should not give up. If you give up, then the world, all the people, good people, they will retreat and the evils will win. So therefore, the good people, they should not give up. One time what happened was that Delhi University, there was many years ago, Delhi University, uh, the, the new vice chancellor was appointed. And vice chancellor, he has to pick up one pro vice chancellor, the next highest position. And he was picking up my friend. And my friend, um, he just casually told me, Lordji, should I accept the position of the pro vice chancellor? And I said, I thought that he was just casually saying something, totally, I just ignored. Then one point, he said, Dorji, now tell me, I'm being offered this position, shall I accept it? I did not say anything, I just wrote two lines. I said, evil will win when the angels retreat. So he accepted the job. He accepted the job, and then he became extremely busy. He was in the office till 10, 10 p.m., believe it or not, every day. So when I sent him emails, no replies. He was so busy. And then later on, he sent a message to one of my friends saying that if Dorji is dead, I am responsible. I will strangle him to death because he put me in this position. Now I'm not getting time to even to respond to his emails. Okay, so what I'm saying is that good people should not withdraw. Good people should not give up. Good people must strive. Whatever knowledge that you got, you got, you have to expand on this, know the complete knowledge, not only the knowledge, but the knowledge of how to rectify the problem. Not only the knowledge of the problem, but the knowledge to rectify the problem. This is another thing that good people should put effort in. So this young group, young group, young group, young group I expect, I expect. That all of us, okay, that all of us should put effort in expanding our knowledge to know the world and to the knowledge to fix the world. We must acquire both. This is so important. Don't give up. Good people should not give up. Good. Thank you, Sonam Tobdella. Okay, then Zigala, what next? Gishla, should we wind up here or should we do no, one that's last up to you. question? Yes, 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 of course. Okay. I'll be very happy. So uh, we'll do one last question and then we're going to wind up. So uh, anyone who would want to ask one last question can go forward. Ishi Dorjila. Yes, if you may, can I ask two questions? Yes, 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 sure. 
One question is that, uh, do you think, I you really think that Buddhism as a religion is losing its ground, is losing its stronghold? Because I could see a lot of people, or even in the Asian countries, especially if it's China or East Asia, a lot of people are converting themselves into Christianity or are turning themselves into atheists. Uh, this is my first question. Why, despite of it being one of the oldest religions in the world, it's not, uh, it's not exactly the most popular one. And the other question is that I was scrolling through the Instagram and uh, came to know that it's Pride Month. So does Buddhi, uh, Buddhism as a religion uh, recognizes people who identify themselves with different sexualities, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, uh, does Buddhism as a religion embrace them? Because as far as I know, Islam or Muslim, uh, I mean Islam or Christianity, they do not. So what's your take on this? Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad that the last question is very rich, rich with controversies. <laughs> okay, Ishita thank you. The first question is about the, the conversion, the Buddhism, the men of the, the Buddhists, uh, they are getting converted to the other religions like Christianity. Um, the, let us keep in mind that uh, the let us keep in mind again the same thing. The, the response that I gave to Sonam Tukdenla, the same thing that like to see this young group, young Dharma, um, the, the Sikkim organization. This is so precious, and I see this as uh, extremely auspicious education. And getting the um, mail from Tenzi Gala. Coming to know that first, I got mail from Henry Nimala. Henry Nimala, raise hand. Henry Nimala, yes. Henry Nimala, and he is the headmaster of the Nwunga School in, here in India, a Tibetan, a Tibetan school in India. He's the headmaster. And uh, I, met, I met him. We had uh, some uh, teaching online last year. And then the, um, the, the discussion, I was so inspired to see that he's very dynamic. And then the, I told him that, okay, we can have any, anything can happen, any programs can happen. And then the, he did not forget it. And then the, he met uh, Tenzi Higala and then told Tenzi, uh, told Tenzi Higala that uh, Gishala, there's a promise that he made, right? He said, anything can happen. Any programs can happen. So you must make a request. Then Tenzi Gala and the Khandi uh, Nyamala sent me a letter saying that Tenzi Gala is interested for this. And I was not expecting like this group. I was expecting like 10 people, 10 young boys and girls. And then they suddenly, it's a, look, a very dynamic, brilliant young boys and girls. This is how we have to proceed. The point is that, the point is that the point is that say the we have your own culture second is you have your own culture be proud of your culture your culture is so precious westerners i would say the westerners they their culture is primarily the culture of the number one christianity judaism and then the science modern science and in, in india in india is the, the culture of the ahimsa the culture of the philosophy the culture of psychology is so rich. And Sikkim is the culture of the Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist psychology is so rich. And look at this program that we are conducting, not a master's course, not a diploma course. How many people from America, how many people from Israel, believe it or not, they are applying for this course. They were not Buddhist, but they're so impressed by the richness and the profundity of the Buddhist philosophy. So this is what is happening from others voluntarily paying money, paying money to, to learn the Buddhist philosophy. And here I say the, it is not our mistake. It's not the mistake of the youngsters. It's not the mistake of the youngsters. It's simply because that there's no connection. There's no connection between what's the real the Buddhist teachings and the real culture, the real Buddhist philosophy and and the, the, uh, the Buddhist youngsters, no connection. So they let loose, they become loose. And then, you know, they turn to us, the 
other faiths. This is very sad. And if one knows one's own culture so well, and if you prefer to go to any other religion, that's fine. That's not a problem. If you know your culture so well, despite that, if you prefer Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Jainism, Judaism, whatever, it, even if you can become non-Buddhist, non-believer, that's also fine. But the first thing that we need to have is that we must know your culture so well, because when you go out, you will say that I'm a sickness. You will not say that I am Christian, I am you know Jew, I'm Buddhist like this. You will say I'm sickness. Sickness means that people will connect you to your culture. What do you have to give me? What do you have to to give me? Meaning that, okay, so we are Westerners. I have modern science. You, Sikhimis, what do you have to tell that you are proud of your culture? What do you have? Your culture, what is that culture? You don't know. At least if you know your culture so well, if you know your culture so well, then it is you to decide whether you claim yourself as Buddhist or you claim yourself as non-Buddhist. It's fine. It's not a problem. The first thing that we need to know is that you must feel proud of your own culture. You must feel proud as a Sikhimis. That is number one thing. We should not forget it. So this is so important. Number one. Then number two is um, Buddhism. Um, the it's not so popular. Actually, it is so popular. I'm just um, I'm not a superstar teacher. I'm just a very simple teacher. Still, you know, at Tibet House we attract so many Westerners from very remote islands, small islands like Aruba. How many you heard Aruba Island? No. A very tiny island. And then one time in my office, somebody turned up and said that, okay, the, uh, I'm from Aruba Island. I said, what is Aruba Island? But oh, this very tiny island. And how, how come that you came here? And the person said, I'm doing Nalanda Master's course. And how did you hear this in this tiny island? Then the person told me all the stories. Look, the world is turning towards the incredibly refined philosophy and the psychology of the Buddhism. So now I'm hoping that this young, uh, young Dharma Sik, the Sikkim organization, that is going to be like a platform to open up this rich Buddhist philosophy to the young Sikkimists. And not only young Sikkimists, to the Arunachal, to Ladal, and Ladal is already very good. Ladal, Arunachal, and all the places in Himalayas, Piti, and so forth. So um, we are very much looking forward to that. Number three. Then number three is about the what is the Buddhist take on the sexuality, say the sexual orientation. Um, say the um, the point is that the okay. What I would say is the, I'll I'll make it quick here. It's uh, so basically the point is that uh, the in Buddhism, in Buddhism, um, the it's about say the we already acknowledge, we already the Buddhism already acknowledges that people have problems. What problems? Emotional problems, attachment, anger, jealousy, fear, tension. All these problems are there, and Buddhism is not for the perfect people. Buddhism is not for the Buddhas. Buddhism is for the people who suffer, even those people with, um, say, the uh, those with a different sexual orientation, like gays, lesbians, and so forth. Even they have the problem. Every one of us, we have the problem. So Buddhism is not for the people who don't have the problem. It's for the problem with the problem. So therefore, my teacher said, if you don't have problem, you don't need Buddhism. This is a so important message. In other words, the Buddha's message is grounded on compassion. If you exclude these people, gays, lesbians, so forth, where is compassion? So Buddha will embrace all of these beings equally, number one. Number two, rationally speaking, rationally speaking, what's the problem? If a boy is allowed to have, you know, if a boy is allowed to have an interaction with a girl, if a girl is allowed to have an interaction with a boy, what's the problem with the boy, boy, girl, girl? What's the problem? 
if there's a problem with a girl and boy, boy and boy, girl and girl, boy with a girl is also a problem. But girl with a boy is also a problem. After all, this attachment is the problem of samsara. This attachment. It's not just the attachment, boy, boy, girl, girl. This is not the only problem which creates samsara. It's the attachment in general that creates a problem. So if there's a problem with the boy-boy problem, the boy-boy relationship, then a the boy-girl relationship is also a problem. So the point is that the Buddha is not antagonistic towards anybody. In fact, the Buddhism is to embrace everybody, no matter what your sexual orientation is. That you should, your happiness is number one important thing. It's not about, you know, whether in the conventional world, whether you accept or not accept, it's not the point. Buddhism accepts everybody. This is so important. By no means there should be any discrimination against the people with different uh, sexual orientations. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Gishila. Thank you so much. So with this, we well, come uh, to the end of the event. And uh, lastly, I would like to ask uh, Sangapidin Bhutia to deliver a vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sangapidin Bhutia. And on behalf of the Young Dharma Buddhist Youth Association, Sikkim, I'd like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to Venerable Geshe Dorji Damdulla for gracing your knowledge and letting us understand the value of Buddhism. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Venerable Geshe Dorji Damdulla, who despite his busy schedule, made, made time for this conference and shared his valuable knowledge with us. I also wish to express my gratitude to the coordinators of the Tibet House, New Delhi, for making this event possible. A big thank you to my friend and the founder of this association, Tenzing Yeka, coming up with this idea and taking the initiative to bring the youth of Sikkim together for a better cause. A special thank you to everyone who took the time and effort to share this information about, uh, about this conference to as many people as possible. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone for the involvement and the willingness to attend this meeting. We hope you look forward to such meetings and events in the future as well. Thank you once again. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank you, yeah, Thank you, Ishidojila. Thank you, Sanjay Pandala. And thank, thank you, you sir. each and thank every you. one of you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Tenzi Dumala. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tenzi Dumala. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dumala. And Tenzi Chetan, the IT person behind, are working for us. Tenzi Chetan, thank you. Tenzi Dumala, thank you. Each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you so Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much.